Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar, and here's a brand new halacha for you, and it's for Monday, the 12th day of March. Here we go. Today, well, you know, we're now less than 30 days to Pesach, believe it or not, and whenever a holiday is less than 30 days away, the Gemara says that we should be studying its laws, especially Pesach, which has perhaps the most intricate of all the laws of all the holidays. So here we go. First of all, on Pesach cleaning. Please remember, I like to say this every single year, Pesach cleaning is not to be confused with spring cleaning. When people do spring cleaning, they choose to, let's say, I don't know, empty out their whole garage and put it all out all over the place and dust off everything and make themselves sneeze and get sick and crazy and whatever it is that people are doing and decide what they're tossing and what they're keeping and blah, 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 blah. That's not what Pesach cleaning is. You might make the Pesach cleaning much harder for yourself if you try to make it into a spring cleaning, and God did not ask that of us. So don't confuse the two. If you feel like making it hard and doing spring cleaning, that's kind of like your problem. All God asked you to do is to find and search for any chametz that's in your house and to get rid of that. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Let's give two common examples. God um, would want us cleaning any of the crumbs of chametz that are in our carpet for example okay so if you have a good vacuum cleaner although the vacuum cleaner of course didn't exist in the time of the shulchan Aruch, the code of jewish law but we can tell from the way the laws are written that what you're expected to do is to do a normal amount of cleaning so let's say your vacuum cleaner when it's working well picks up all pieces of stuff with one go over of the carpet well if that's the case then you don't have to go over a spot in your carpet like 30 times because there might be a crumb of chametz there. As long as your vacuum cleaner is working properly, and hopefully it is, check if it is, then just vacuum over an area and after you vacuum a normal amount, maybe a, maybe twice if you think you miss a thing once in a while after once, but that's it. Not three, five, ten, twenty times. Just enough to do a normal vacuuming of the area and then you have picked up all chametz crumbs that come up and that's all you're expected to do is to get all chametz crumbs that come up. But to do crazy things like search in between each fiber over and over and over, that's beyond what God asks us to do in our Pesach cleaning. Another example, we're supposed to get rid of the chametz that's accessible to us so you won't be by mistake, getting any chametz and eating a Cheerio from, you know, that your hand grabs from inside of your couch pillow or whatever. I'll tell you why I'm saying this one. Because if a piece of bread fell behind your refrigerator and it takes two people to move your refrigerator, we're not all that afraid that two people are going to move your refrigerator in the middle of Pesach. And therefore, you don't have to move any heavy appliances in doing your Pesach cleaning. They have sat there pretty much all year and they're pretty much going to sit there all throughout Pesach. And if there is a Cheerio or a pretzel behind your refrigerator, it's buried and it's considered buried and no one's coming near it. And please remember the all encompassing rule that we are going to nullify all chametz that we own when Pesach arrives. So all you got to do is a normal amount of searching. You don't have to move any heavy appliances that takes two people to move. All you got to do is clean your normal areas where things aren't buried and the rest of it you're going to nullify and you won't own it when Pesach comes. That should be your general guiding rule but speak to your rabbi about any specifics. Thanks for logging on and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.